the Business Bombshells Beauty Bundle is lovingly made for you. I have it all here. I have I have it all here. I don't have the I don't have the beauty bundle, so I can't afford 125 pounds for face creams. And if I could, I wouldn't buy it anyway now. Um, after after finding all this stuff out, so I have here for you. I have uh, researched researched every single ingredient in every single item inside the beauty bundle, and I have now 16 pages of research here which um, I'm going to be sharing with you all in the description. I mean, I doubt mo most pe many people are gonna wanna go through it um, in, in, its, in its entirety, um, but I will, everything that I tell you today, you can then go into the description, find that chemical, find the reference and go to it and, and see where I got it from. So I'm not, this is, none of this has come from me. This is purely from, uh, from what I found, from what I found out, for just looking into every chemical. So um, all of the, so I will be talking about animal experiments, I will be putting pictures of animal experiments, not too gory, um, but I, if, if that is going to upset you, then don't watch it. Um, I mean, if you're a vegan, really, um, try to watch it. It will upset you, but try to watch it, because if you're a vegan, you're considering working for the, um, the business bombshells, or considering buying any of their products, um, you really, you really should know the truth. You really should, and not only that. Um, I mean, I keep seeing these reps. What a completely natural, completely natural. They're saying it's completely natural. Um, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't. In all fairness to the business bombshells, it doesn't say completely natural on here. It doesn't. It says non-toxic. It says cruelty-free. It says vegan. It doesn't say completely natural. That's what they're saying. They're calling it natural, premium, natural skincare. Um, so let's see if that's true. Now, um, so when I'm, when I'm in, in re reference to the animals, when I talk about the animals, um, I am only using, uh, I am only mentioning animals that have been tested for cosmetic purposes. Um, because a lot of these chemicals, even the ones I don't mention, have also been tested, have been tested on animals, but not for the cosmetics industry, not to see if they're safe for, for face creams and lotions. Um, I'm only mentioning those ones. So... In the interest of not letting the video go on for too long, let's begin. AM serum, right. We come down, water. I, I do apologise if I mis mispronounce these words. I mean, I've never read these words in my life. Um, and I'm not the best at reading at the best of times. So, um, niacinamide. This is a chemical which can be found in nature. But in this instance, it is synthetically derived. So naturally occurring, but synthetically derived. And I've put a, um, I've put a link at the, in this to, to that explains, this article explains the difference between synthetic and natural skincare. Um, in the list below, I will be labeling everything. So when I talk to you, I'll be lab labeling everything that uses a chemical copy of natural ingredients with, a, with an NS. Um, by that, I mean, when the ingredient occurs in nature, but uses laboratory and scientifically derived ingredients. So yeah, a lot of these natural skincare companies, I'm, I'm guessing this is one of them. Um, although again, they don't say completely natural on the website. I can't see it saying completely natural because the products aren't completely natural. Um, a lot of them, yes, they occur in nature, but they, they, they were made in a laboratory. So we start niacinamide, animals used in testing, rabbits and guinea pigs. We come down. Animal testing of ni niacinamide in rabbits in actual formulations produce mostly non-irritating reactions with some marginally irritating responses. So good to know, isn't it? The skin sensitization tests of niacinamide at 5% during induction and 20% during challenge were negative in guinea pigs. So, the animals, so the guinea pigs and the rabbits had this put on them. It was fine. They didn't break out. They didn't convulse um, in pain. And now we know that we can use this chemical and this chemical has been linked to skin lightening properties more effective than hydroquinone without the side effects. But its efficacy goes beyond this. There you go. That's in there for you. Right then, let's come, let's come down. Pencil glycol, it's an E number. And it's, um, this is completely synthetic. Um, it's an E number, it's completely synthetic. Uh, 
it's uh, in the additional chemicals category. The animals used in the testing of this were rats, mice, rabbits, guinea pigs. Right then, prolonged application to the skin of rabbits did not result in avert toxic effects. Right then. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's got following acute oral values have been reported and there's all this, there's all this scientific stuff. I don't know. Rats, mice, rabbits, guinea pigs. There you go. Uh, let's come all the way down. Now, malic acid. This is not a nice one at all. So malic acid, is a, it's an E number. It's E296. It's the preservatives category. This, so L-malic acid is, an, is the naturally occurring form, whereas a mixture of L and D-malic acid is produced synthetically. We don't know which one this is. Malic acid is often used as an ingredient in, an ingredient in cosmetics to balance pH levels. So when you've got all your, your reps that are telling you about your pH levels, it's because it's got this, this stupidity in it. Right then, animals used in the testing. Mice, rats, rabbits. You might notice uh, the rabbits come up quite, quite often. Malic acid did not cause reproductive toxicity in mice, rats or rabbits. Malic acid was a moderate to strong skin irritant in, in animal tests. It was a strong ocular irritant. Ocular is your eyes, right? Malic acid caused severe ocular irritation in rabbits' eyes. Let's see, we know you don't put it in. Don't let it go near your eyes. Thanks to the rabbits now, we know. Don't shove it in your eyes. Just put it on your, just put it on your face. Um, and to do that, uh, the rabbits have their heads, uh, go in a cage, they have their heads stuck out, they can't move, they can't do anything, and they have this stuff, uh, this stuff put in their eyes, um, it's wicked, it's wicked. Uh, moderately irritating to rabbit skin, and was a strong irritant to guinea pigs. So what, sh they, what they, they do in these tests um, is they shave the skin, and then they, they, they shave the fur, and they put it on the skin. Now... Yes, so that's to balance your pH levels. So when you talk, when, when you're listening to all the bullshit about pH levels, make sure you tell them. Um, make sure you tell them why that's in there and why they're able to to give all the bullshit about the pH levels. Um, but make sure you don't get it near your eyes because um, it was a, because because rabbits uh, severely suffered with this with their eyes. That can you imagine them? I don't want to. Well, you don't need to. There you go. Coming, coming down. Are we still on? I think we still are. We move on to the pink face mask. Right then. Oh, the malic acid. Did I told you that? Pink face mask. Here we go. Moving on. Now this is one that you might not expect because it, it is natural. So we talk. This is the sweet almond oil, the Prunus amyl glad 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 glalus dulcis. Sweet almond oil. Oil acts as a lubricant on the skin, gives the skin a soft and smooth appearance. There you go. Undiluted sweet almond oil was tested for acute dermal toxicity in guinea pigs. Dermal is your skin. You put it on your skin. They put it on the skin. They shave the skin and put it on. Um, undiluted sweet almond oil was tested for irritancy uh, in groups of six male albino rabbits. There you go. A soap containing 3% almond meal was practically non-toxic when ingested by rats in an oral, in an acute oral, oral, oral toxicity study. 10 mice, moisturiser was practically non-toxic. There you go. The guinea pigs, the rabbits, the rats and the mice uh, all suffered. They were all killed afterwards. All suffered uh, for you to put that oil on your face for your soft and smooth faces and the soft and smooth appearance. Got those, those animals to thank there. Got lots of animals to thank. You, 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 the, the BB babes have got lots and lots of animals to thank for their glow, their natural glow. Uterospectrum Parky. This is the Shea Butter. Now, this again is natural. Is it natural to slather it all over your skin? Who knows? They decided to test it on animals to find out, though. Animals used in the testing rats and rabbits. Right then. Right. This is, so, this is again the. the High dose in a high dose experiment, two groups of two groups of fifteen male and fifteen female rats received either ten percent or twenty percent shea olein in their feed for three weeks. While mild conjunctival reactions were observed, undiluted shea butter was considered non-irritating when tested in the eyes of male rabbits. There we go. Shoved it in the eyes. 
Don't irritate, someone's looking for them, wasn't it? Bit of a Russian roulette with their animals in these labs because you could get lucky, get trapped in a box for God knows how many days with your head sticking out and get something shoved in your eyes that made your eyes fall out. Or you could get something like the Shea Butter that doesn't irritate them. And, um, and, uh, and, and ladies know, that this is Shea Butter has a soothing and anti-aging properties that make skin that make skin appear smoother and reduce aging i remember there's a woman in one of the videos uh i sent a link to and uh she was addressing what i said about that the labels being all wonky on the uh and she on the, on the pink face mask and she got one out and she was like i don't care what this label i don't care what this pot looks like yeah maybe it is cheap and she took the lid off she went i care how that feels on my face well it feels great on your face and you know you to thank Right then, moving down. Prunus, uh, we've done that one, haven't we? We've done that one. Oh, go down. Right then. Cetera, cetera, aural alcohol. And the, the animals used were rabbits. Uh, skin of New Zealand rabbits. So it's put on the skin of uh, New Zealand albino rabbits. There we go. Just coming further down. Benzyl alcohol. Animals used in the testing. Oh, that, sorry, that cetral alcohol is used to help soften the skin and hair and to thicken and stabilise cosmetic products, such as lotions and hair products. There we go. Benzyl alcohol. Um, and it's, and it's, and it's uh, synthetically derived from natural, natural sources. Benzyl alcohol. Animals used in the testing. Pregnant mice, pregnant rats, pregnant hamsters, pregnant rabbits, male guinea pigs, male albino rabbits. Right then, uh, benzyl, uh, benzyl is a, it's an aromatic alcohol used in a vi wide variety of cosmetic formulations. It's a fragrance component, so it smells nice. And, uh, and it can be in there because these animals will sacrifice their lives and the comfort of their daily lives. And these pregnant animals, I don't have to think what they went through. Anyway, benzyl alcohol treated populations were noted in one reproductive toxicity study using mice. But these were limited to lower maternal body weights and decreased mean litter weight. There you go, they had less less babies uh, when they were treated with this stuff. In a cumulative irritation study, three male al albino guinea pigs received daily open application of this stuff on, on their back for three days. So the backs were shaved and it was put on three days. I kept putting it on. See how they got on? See how they, see how they fared? Right then... Um, so the next one is the uh, same thing happened but for 24 hours with uh, with eight male albino rabbits. Same same thing, uh, only for 24 hours though. Then they were killed afterwards. Well, they, they were looked at, killed. They were, they were observed and then obviously killed afterwards. And that is uh, that is so that is so you can have nice smelling pink face mask. There you go. Come down. Oh. Oh yeah, sorry about that one. Um, Caesareans were then performed on the mice, rats, hamsters and rabbits on day 17, 20, 14 and 29 respectively. Neither adverse effects on maternal or fetal survival nor significant in increase in fetal abnormalities in either, in either soft or skeletal tissues was noted in any of the animals. There we go. All of them had abortions and they, were, they looked at, you know those little, those little tiny pink things that we looked, looked at, observed all of those under a microscope to see how they, see what their skin was like. See how their uh, skeletons and their bodies were like. There we go. Glyceryl sterate. Animals used in the testing of this. Mice, rabbits, guinea pigs and rats. We're still in the pink face mask, aren't we? We are. Yeah. Uh, cosmetic ingredient review. This is used as a skin conditioning agent, right? This is what this is used for. Uh, fed up to 53 mice, doses of 50 to 100 milligrams daily until the animals died. Three mice develop brain tumours on the upper surface of the frontal lobe, that's the front of their brain, consisting of mainly differentiated nerve cells. I don't even know what that means. It doesn't sound good though, does it? 5% glycerol, gl glycerol, sterate, did not promote the carcin carci carcinogenicity of DMBA in mouse skin. In a sub, sub chronic and chronic dermal toxicity tests, this chemical was non-toxic to rabbits, but did cause moderate irritation, primarily the eye, the eye irritation studies. At concentrations of up to 100% were mildly irritating and non-irritating to rabbits. So there you go, more, more, more at rabbits' eyes having uh, chemicals put in them, having crap put in them uh, for you to have your beauty bundle. The Dre's procedure of, or a modification of it was used to evaluate the potential eye irritancy um, of this chemical. The ingredient was instilled into one of one eye of each of each test rabbit. So that's when the, the head in the thing um, 
and can't move. They can't even scratch their eyes. You imagine when you have something in your eye and uh, you just want to scratch it. It's such a natural thing. They're, their heads, they cannot do anything. They just have to sit there um, and have stuff put in their eyes. It's heartbreaking, like for goodness sake. It's makes me ashamed of myself because I know that probably all my products have this stuff in it. You don't think about it though, do you? It does make me ashamed of myself, to be honest. There you go. In um, in Seven Guinea Pigs sensitization, sensitization studies, it was concluded that neither this chemical was capable of inducing sensitization. Uh, this glycerol serrates have been subjected to a number of chronic toxicity tests that show no adverse effects on the reproduction in rats fed high levels of the diet through three generations. There we go. Three, gen three generations of them, feeding it to them. Hey, I hate humans. I hate humans. Uh, Dehydroacetic de acid. I've got no idea what that is. I do, I do know what it is. I have no idea how to read it. Animals used in the testing rats, rabbits, and dogs. Now, this one's not a nice one. I'm going to tell you now, it's not a nice one at all. Right then. Uh, it's used as a non toxic ingredient to keep our little pots of precious creams from spoiling. There you go. You don't want to go mouldy. Rats in four groups of 12 were each fed diets consisting of varying amounts. Two rats from each group were killed every two days for 12 days. Uh, and total dehydroacetic acid intake and blood plasma concentrations were determined. A skin absorption study in rabbits was conducted by the Dray's sleeve test. The Dray's one, you know that one. With the exception that the animals were not restrained in their cages and the sleeves were wrapped in heavy cloth bandages around their bodies to restrain them instead. Um... Now this one's the one that uh, probably, if you're a dog lover, you're not going to want to hear this. Toxic doses of sodium de dehydroacetate, and this is one, dehydroacetic acid administered orally to and or intravenously affect primarily the central nervous system in dogs. Salvation, that's the, the dribbling, retching the... Uh, 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 and, um, and vomiting precede ataxia weakness and stupor, muscle twitching and convulsions, ending in respiratory failure. Depending on the size and route of administration, death may occur anywhere from 24 to 72 hours after receiving a single dose. So the lucky dogs um, would have died um, in agony within a day. The unlucky dogs would have died in agony um, and that would have taken three days to die and they were just watched doing that. It was all, it was all written up. There you go. That's for your. That's to stop your little precious pots from spoiling. There you go. Disodium ed ed. Now this one is. It is contra This is completely synthetic. Now, animals used in the testing were rabbits and animal experimentation. Rabbits that received high oral doses of this chemical showed signs of severe diarrhea and died. Um, now, studies, so this is in skincare, this helps prevent cosmetic formulations and other personal care products, such as lotion screams, from deteriorating. That's why they put it in. It's all preservatives, it doesn't don't want it to deteriorate. Studies have shown that long-term ingestion application of disodium EDTA is unsafe, as it may cause serious toxicity within the body. Now, it says... Does that very, doesn't sound very non-toxic to me, does it? I mean, we haven't come to the best of the non-toxic yet, but you go on. Um, kidney damage, dangerously low calcium levels, um, and even death. Some studies claim that dystodium EDTA as a penetration enhancer, which means that it disrupts the surface of skin cells, allowing other chemicals to enter the body more easily. There you go. Uh, there's your... You're non-toxic. I suppose they argue we don't put enough in for it to have that, but don't say you're bloody non-toxic. Goodness me. So we have the... Uh, we're moving down. Now we are on... And don't worry, I haven't finished with the pink face mask yet. I haven't. I've got more to tell you about that. But we move on. So, micellar cleansing water. We have the peg... So the peg six, caprylic... Caprilic, capric, 
glycerides, six completely synthetic. And it's considered an excellent emollient and skin replenishing ingredient. That's what that's for. Uh, it's rabbits. Again, always rabbits. Always rabbits, isn't it? It's always the rabbits. And they're so docile, aren't they? Just sit there. They're just beautiful, loving animals. Just sit there and to take it, don't they? Rabbit eye irritation. There we go. In rabbits, formulations containing 4% of this chemical and up to 3% of another one. Well, not ocular irritants. Put it in the eyes, of course. Formulations containing 4% PEG-6 and another chemical were not irritating rabbit skin. There we go. Uh, oh, it did say on another website, this um, pen, pen, you'll see it in there. Something you being PT, I'm going to call it. Uh, two words I can't even pronounce. And this chemical, PAG-6, caprylic. Capric glycerides. This is avoid them. It's just to avoid things with those in, and that's on the website um, of things to avoid in in cosmetics. Avoid that. It says on there. It's all there. You can see it all for yourself. Right then. Sodium benzoate. Animals used in the testing. Rats and mice. Here we go. Sodium. It's a preservative used in cosmetics and skincare products that also functions as a corrosion inhibitor. Uh, sodium benzoate in the diet for 20 so this is obviously for the purpose of cosmetics all female in the diet for 28 days all female rats died by day 11, 11 and male rats by day 13 okay. sodium benzoate at doses of varying amounts is administered by gavage to groups of at least 20 pregnant albino cd outbred mice and white albino rats on gestation days Six and fifteen. There we go. It's kind of been. Imagine when you were pregnant. I've been pregnant, and somebody gives you a load of chemicals. Uh, and it also to be noted, cautions. While sodium benzoate is typically good for all skin types, in extreme cases, it may cause skin rash or irritation. And it doesn't say. I couldn't see that on the website that it said that. We move on. Sodium sorbate. It's synthetic. Animals te used in testing: rats, mice, rabbits, guinea pigs, and dogs. Right then, um, it's a salt of ascorbic acid, naturally occurring antimicrobial compound. It use, it's used as a mild preservative in cosmetic and skincare formulations and, a pa and as a paraben alternative. They're going on about the no parabens, it's because they've shoved this stuff in instead. Um, so the parabens are the toxic ones, instead they put the, this one in. Alternative to prevent or retard growth of microorganisms and protect these products from spoiling. Right then, potassium sorbate is not acutely toxic or harmful when administered orally to rats. Um, also, potassium sorbate, non-irritant in the drays test with rabbits. There we go, stubbed it in the eyes. Um, <laughs> potassium sorbate displayed no skin sensitization, sensitizing potential in modified guinea pig uh, maximization test. No substance related adverse effects could be observed in repeated dietary administration tests in rats and dogs. There we go. Hey, let's put my fancy dresses on. Right then. I'm going to move down. I haven't finished with the missile water yet. Don't worry. If you know, you know. Right. Hydrating facial mist. Rats, mice, rabbits and guinea pigs. Let's go down. Panthenol. Animals used in testing. Rabbits, panthenol is used in skincare products because of its ability to attract and hold moisture. Dose it, shave flaked skin, 10 albino rabbits, 90 days, so put on the skin basically. Ocular irritation in the rabbits as well. Eyes and skin on the rabbits, there we go. So, sodium hydro, hydro hyaluronate, usually synthetic. Animals used in the testing, random bred rats, owl monkeys, cats. Sprague, Dorley, rats and their offspring, sheep and dogs. Bloody full house there. Cats, dogs. I mean, no, no rabbits though. Oh goodness, not a full house after all, I suppose. It's a water binding ingredient which it hydrates and separates the skin, allowing it to retain water. It helps fight wrinkles and other signs of aging. There we go. Oops. Random red, white male rats were killed and blood collected at varying days, hours after injection. Um, uh, it was injected into six eyes of five owl monkeys. There we go. Uh, it's a lubricant. 
Four platinum bands. Uh, four platinum bands into the ears of cats. Um, on pregnant, uh, effects of sodium derived from coxcombs. On pregnant, sprog sprogdorly rats and their offspring was performed. After reviewing inhalation toxicity data on dogs and sheep, and that's when um, that's probably when the uh, the the, the what are those really really laid back dogs, those those beagles, have got the things on the face. There we go. After reviewing inhalation toxicity data on dogs and sheep, the CRI expert panel determined that hydrolonic acid and sodium hydrolen hydro and potassium hydrolonate can be used safely in sprays because the ingredient particle size is not. So basically, do you know how they're going? Oops, it's mist is so fine, it's so fine. Um, they it is nice and fine, yeah. and um, the dogs and the sheep um, let us know that we're safe to inhale it. it won't do you any harm. You can sit there with your hydrating facial mist. Why not you? We needed the dogs and the sheep to tell us that, but now we know. Here we go, moving on. Right there. Now we're on to the PM oil. Right. Caprylic, capric, triglyceride. Right then, animals used in testing. Mice, guinea pigs, rats, rabbits, dogs. In mice and guinea pigs, little skin penetration was observed. Three-month feeding studies were performed with this on a rat in rats and dogs. There we go. Move on. Citral, it's synthetic. It can be synthetic or natural. Animals using the testing guinea pig. There we go. Uh, it was uh, tested for its sensitization activity in, in a guinea pig. Animal studies, citral induced sensitization in guinea pig, maximization test, and in the mouse local lymph node. Oh, mice, mice and guinea pigs, my, my mistake. I better pop that into my notes so I can update references. Right then, geranial. This is natural. Animals used in testing, rabbits and pigs. Okay, it's a volatile fragrance ingredient extracted from geranium. Geranium is capable of causing sensitivity when applied to skin. Uh, it's a fragrance ingredient though. There we go. Irritation, skin, irritant for rabbit skin, eye, irreversible effects on the rabbit eye. So yeah, this, this rabbit was one of the ones, uh, it didn't get the shea butter, it wasn't the, the shea butter. Like, they were over there with the shea butter and they were fair and fine. They were just there, they couldn't move the bodies but they were fine. They put this in the rabbit's eye, this geranial and um and 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 i i, I can't even imagine the pain that those rabbits went through with that they couldn't do anything about it. it was stuck in there with this crap in their eye um and it's uh so so you can so so you can have it in your in your your in your pm serum there we go it's in there these experiments was applied to three or four rabbits for four hours and the application site was reserved for the following seven days Redness of skin and mucous membranes, uh, swelling. Uh, later, for seven days after the application, scared a scored according to Dre's. The results were. I don't even understand the results. The results were animals, pain and suffering, rabbits, miserable life, and torturous death. There we go. 12 organ ang um, angora. They just literally wanted to keep testing this one on rabbits i was like we haven't tested it on enough has anyone got any angora rabbits i think we need to test it on the angora rabbits i can't we can't be sure that uh that this chemical won't completely fuck you over unless we test it on the angora rabbits we're gonna need 12 of them 12 of them the other rabbits weren't enough and we're gonna need some guinea pigs as well i'm not gonna be happy unless we've tried it on the guinea pigs as well we definitely need more rabbits right then linalool animals used in testing Rabbits, uh, guinea pigs, rats. Here we go. Naturally derived ingredient from essential oils that is used in skincare and cosmetic formulation to improve the scent. That's not nice for you. You make your, oh, it's not a spray, is it? The, the oil, it's, you drip it on, don't you? That one. So rabbits, uh, the rabbits suffered for that one. And guinea pigs on the skin. There we go. Last, I think, animal. What's the last chemical? Let's have a quick look. Let's uh, sit. Citronello, citronello. There we go. Animals use rats. Citronello is naturally occur is a naturally occurring ingredient used in skincare and cosmetics formulations to improve the scent of products. Another one for the scent. Another one to make it smell nice. Rats. The test substance preparation was applied to the dorsal skin. So the skin on the back was shaved, shoved on with a syringe in each case after removal of the dressing, and this went nicely. The application area was washed 
with lukewarm water. Right then. Comes to the best bit now. Because are you think yourself the one this lady said she said that if they used fancy containers that they'd have to push the price tag up i mean i'm going to be honest with you on here none of the chemicals or ingredients in um i mean i've listed them all there they're all there they're, they're not um they're not expensive that they are pretty standard i mean you will find them in low-end cosmetics there is nothing in here that has been they haven't developed anything. I mean, you get your big names and your big brands that I can see that you keep comparing the business bundle to, which you it's not you can't compare them to. And these brands, they develop their own um, chemicals. They develop their own chemicals and they test them on animals. They do, but they develop their own chemicals. I mean, this costs a lot of money. They make thousands in marketing. Uh, there's nothing. There is no ingredient in here to justify that price tag. I'm going to come to the best bit now. Because I thought to myself, when I was looking at the uh, the pink micellar water and the pink face mask, I thought, well, that pink colour doesn't look very natural to me. Doesn't it look natural to you? That pink colour, do you think that bright pink colour, do you see that in nature anywhere? I think it looks natural. Anywhere? So I didn't, I thought, what's that then? Right then, all will be revealed. The pink colour that you will find in the pink face mask and the micellar water is called CI17200 and it's completely synthetic, it's completely synthetic. Now, this is also known as D and C Red 33, Red 33, um, Red 33 Lake, right. It is a synthetic an artificial colour that is put in cosmetics. Now I'm just going to read you, and this is from several websites. This is on one website, this is from several websites, and you can Google it yourself. They didn't put the red 33, they just put that, that number there. Um, but the best, the, the best about it is yet to come. Now, here we go. Although many manufacturers have started phasing out to the F, D and C and D and C colours altogether, the reason why they're still commonly finding in, in foods and cosmetics is because their colours are generally more stable and consistent than natural dyes. Um, well, you know, I suppose, is that worth it? It's worth it, isn't it? Um, they're easier to source, so it's easier and more, you know, and inexpensive. So you can get natural dyes. You go with this dye, it's, it's cheap, it's cheaper. Get as much in, get as much money as you can. So since they're still so commonly used, this means it's a case of buyer beware. You need to find it yourself, buyer beware. If you aren't able to avoid them at all, it's best to at least steer clear of these commonly listed troublemakers. And they go on and they specifically list Red 33 Lake. There we go, specifically. It's all on there. Unfortunately, and this is on another website, Unfortunately, this is but one of many incredibly harmful ingredients commonly found in red lipsticks. There are a few more that you should that should be avoided at all costs. And it goes through red 33. There you go. Why? And this is from the website. This website is um, it's green. Uh, this is from Mama Tips. It's, it's green personal care. So-called coal tar chemicals found in many are R, D, and C, or D and D, C colours, which is what it is, uh, used in makeup and hair dye, and it gives some examples, are carcinogenic and, and impurities in others, such as the D, C, red 33, have been shown to cause cancer when applied to the skin. Mm. Shall I read that again? Shall I read that bit for you, for you again? Right, let me read it again. And impurities in others, DC Red 33, says another one, have been shown to cause cancer when applied to the skin. Shall I say that again? Have been shown to cause cancer when applied to the skin. There we go. Synthetic colours are derived from petroleum or tar sources are suspected in human carcinogens, that's cancer, skin irritants, and are linked to ADHD. ADHD, shall I say that again? ADHD in children, there you go. European has banned 
them in food. There we go. It's all there. As your premium skincare, yeah. non-toxic. Is it non-toxic? Can we say it's non-toxic? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's non-toxic. Same sounds pretty toxic to me. I could put that fa red face mask or micellar water near my face if you paid me. <sighs> and do you know the joke of it all? You can get these red dyes in nature. Yeah, okay. They might not always be as, as bright pink or they might not always be as... Because I know you like your pink. Uh, but you can get these colourants. can be naturally occurring. There's none of those harmful effects. And I've put the link there. You can get natural red dyes, um, which will not hurt you. They're more expensive. They are more expensive. But do you know what? Isn't this supposed to be premium skincare? Premium skincare with cheap crap in it. Really? Come on, guys. You want to sell this shit to people? Tell them what's in it. Tell them what's in it. You want to, you want to, you want to say it's vegan? Tell them all the chemicals that you didn't need to put in. You didn't need to put in them. Um, half those chemicals it needs to go in there for, for, for anti-aging, isn't it? You need to, it's for that natural glow, isn't it? You want your, your natural glow? The natural glow, you know why you've got it now. Stick it all on, slather on your ADHD and cancer face mask and sit there. And, and as you're sitting back at 15 minutes with it all on your face and you can smell the sweet aromas of death, um, you can think about, uh, you can take a moment to think about um, all the chemicals it, that you've got on your face, all the animals that suffered so you could put those chemicals on your face and the fact that you have a known toxic chemical on your face that is only in that cream because the people who made it wanted to make it for as cheaply as possible and you're still there paying, you're thinking it's worth £25 and buying your own personal so you can be a product of the product, a product of the crap, a product of the crap. You're a bunch of assholes. Um, if you still have seen this video and you want to sell that shit to people, you want to put that shit on your own face, um, even stupider than, you, than, I, than I thought. Um, if, uh, everything, I mean, I, what I just said at the end is personal opinion. Personal opinion. Stupid enough. Um, but everything else, everything else is in here and everything else will be listed. So, uh, you can see for yourself. As far as I'm aware, the, the products themselves were not um, tested on animals. I guess why that's why they're calling them cruelty-free and vegan, because the finished product, the micellar water, none of that was, was put on animals. And I guess that's why they're saying it's cruelty-free. Uh, is it cruelty-free, though? Is it non-toxic? Uh, for my opinion, cruelty-free, it's a no. Vegan, my opinion, it's a no. And uh, toxic, definitely a no, in my opinion. There you go. Anyone comes after any of my followers again, um, I'll make another video. Um, there is a video up circulating at the moment uh, where a woman called Suzanne is named and vulgar, disgusting things are being said uh, about her, sexual, the, the, about her doing sexual acts on dogs and um, about somebody sending sex toys to her to perform sexual acts on herself. If this video is not removed, um, I will make more videos. There you go. You know what I'm talking about. Um, that video needs to come down, naming Suzanne and the disgusting sex acts because I've already screen um, recorded the section that, um, and I will stop, and I will post it on my page. That video needs to come down. Whoever has seen that video knows what I'm talking about. Make sure you tell the person. Anyone comes after anybody on my of my followers, you coming after me, I will make more videos. I'll make videos about your company. I will break down every single aspect of your company from top to bottom and lay it out for every single person to see. Nobody comes after my followers. Um, I've got every right to call out people of notoriety who I believe are acting unethically, right? And I will keep doing it. No one's gonna shut me down. No one's gonna shut me up. You can send me as much abuse as you like. Goodbye.